Welcome to this week's podcast. My name is Gabrielle. I'm your host. And this week we spoke with Chris O'Brien of Who Did That Media in Washington, D.C. Chris is a voiceover and advertising media specialist. So let's roll the tape. You're thinking about visual arts in society today. How does what we see affect everything else? You know, there are some, you know, absolute geniuses out there who have no formal training whatsoever in our industry that stumble upon a great idea and they'll throw it out there and you'll see it on YouTube. And, you know, those kind of things inspire me. So, you know, I try to take the, the things that, have, that I glean from looking at stuff amateurs have done and recorded and, 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 and use those ideas to kind of make what I'm doing better. So is there a particular person that you get inspired by? Um, no, and, and, and I, I intentionally, you know, there's people I admire, but I intentionally don't uh, uh, kind of uh, lean on the inspiration of one person or the other because, you know, while they say the copying somebody is the greatest form of flattery, it's also the greatest way to get yourself into court for, for copyright infringement. I like to kind of look at everything and see everything and just kind of absorb it. That's how the creative mind works. I mean, you just take all these inspirations from all these different people. And, and just kind of download it and let it digest a little bit in your brain, and then you can kind of put out a creative idea based on all of that information. Now, a project to get you into kind of the mood music or any particular things that you look at? Some people call that pre-gaming. And yes. um, um, the way I pre-game, it's kind of interesting. I am extremely ADHD, so um, and a lot of creative people are. So yeah. when, it, to, when it comes to actually getting down to the creative process, I spend a lot of time ruminating about it beforehand, but then once once I'm ready to pull that trigger, I've got, you know, all my notes and all my ideas and everything I've been ruminating on ready to go, and it becomes like a tomb of silence in my office, absolute silence in it. And in my in my office, everybody knows that when when I'm in that in that uh, creative view, just stay away and be quiet because that's when my mind just really can focus in on what I'm doing. And and when I get to the point where I think I'm done. I'll, you know, I'll go back and I'll, I'll look at what I've done, and and then I'll walk away, and I'll, you know, I might go listen to some of my favorite music, rock music, jazz music, whatever, uh, just to get my mind clean. You know? Well, okay. Having said that, do you have a favorite artist? I'm a big Van Gogh guy. I love Van Gogh. I just love the creativity and the colors and the textures in that. I like George Surratt. I like um, George O'Keefe. I like um, the Wyeth starting actually. From N.C. Wyatt all, all the way down to Jamie Wyatt, I like them all. Um, oh yeah. They're you know they're more photo photo realistic type paintings, but um, you, you know um, one of the guys that I think is just kind of blows my mind. And most people see his work and just go, it's just a bunch of paint. Is uh, Jackson Pollock? Pollock is awesome. Well, Jackson Pollock to me is is the best representation of my creative mind because <laughs> it's layer upon layer of colors and shapes and, and ideas that develop as he's doing this. So when he began the painting, I, I honestly don't believe Jackson Pollock saw that exact vision of completion. I think he saw that it was going to utilize these colors and he was going to grow it from there. And I think, you know, really inspirational, you see the Jack, Jackson Pollock paintings, um, you know, I, I, there's one in the, in the National Gallery that's got a roach stuck to it. I mean, good, goodness gracious. I mean, it's just like that guy, that guy created and just kept going. So I, I find him to be extremely inspirational. You, you know, there's an interesting um, question that you sent me about how do you translate visual media to sound or vice versa? Yes, yes, yes. And it's a perfect example how creative people and non-creative people are. When I sit down with my wife and I, I say, so let me ask you a question. What does green mm -hmm. make you feel? And she goes, I don't, green can't make you feel. It's a color. I said, green makes you feel. It's new life in spring. How about when you combine green with light blue? What does that make you think of? And she's like, uh, green and light blue. And I go, no, oh, that's springtime. Those are springtime colors. When you see black, you feel darkness, foreboding. And, and, and she's just, she just looks at, at me like I'm nuts. I think that when you translate visual media to sound and sound to media, those of us who are creative just kind of see that in our head. Instinctively, you, you tend to kind of gravitate towards those things that um, I wouldn't have a funeral march with a banjo in it. You know what I mean? I mean, right. it's just kind of instinctively, I know that doesn't work. 
Well, unfortunately, I, we're out of time. So I appreciate you. Okay. Got um, we'll see you early soon again, okay? Okay, thanks a lot. You've been listening to a conversation with Chris O'Brien of Who Did That Interviews. I'm your host, Gabrielle Owens, and we hope to see you again on the next podcast of Diva Blue Interviews.